In this video, I visit Rygate Fort to take on another 15 minute photo challenge. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, I'm going to do another 15 minute photo challenge. Now I've come to Rygate Fort, which sounds really good, except it's actually buried below the ground. So there's not much to photograph above the ground, but we're going to find some good shots. 15 minutes isn't long and we should find some great pictures. And I'm going to start here. We've got some beautiful ironwork that's all cobwebby and looking a little bit old. Just my sort of thing. Now it is really quite dark and gloomy down here. So let's see what we get for a shutter speed when I come in and take my shot. Yeah, okay, I'm getting a, a 30th of a second, and that's, that's not so good when I'm really zoomed in. I'm using my 24 to 105 lens, and I'm on ISO 800. Now that's quite high, but this is a 5D Mark II full frame camera, and if you've got to shoot in low lighting, high ISO, it's a good tool for the job. Now I can just slightly underexpose my image because I'm shooting in raw. I know I can pull it back, and underexposing just helps to bump up the shutter speed. So if I underexpose by a stop, that doubles my shutter speed, and that looks pretty good. So I've got this idea in my head. If I grab a leaf, that's a um, well, random leaf, anyone will do. I'm just gonna rest it up against the metal work here and just get a, a little shallow depth of field shot. So we'll pop that there and we'll open up the aperture. It's breezy today, this could take a while. We'll pop that there. We'll open up the aperture. I'm still on ISO 800. In the background of my shot, there's a white, there's a bit of white wall, and that's really distracting. You've got to watch out for highlights like that. So I'm going to move my leaf. I'm going to move it one bar along, and I'm going to take the same shot, but this time I'm going to try and make sure I avoid getting that white background in the scene. Okay, so um, what else can we photograph? plenty of things to shoot but do you know what I've just seen the the stairs here and they're sort of facing towards the light now normally as photographers we say never shoot into the light actually some of the best pictures I've ever taken are, are done with exactly that in mind shooting straight into the light so I'm going to try and get a picture of these steps I've got to get right down low because I want to get a, a strong uh, shape of the steps and also a symmetrical shape as well so let's have a, a shot here But the sky is looking a little bit wishy-washy. There's not really too much detail in the sky. So I'm going to drop my exposure compensation down a couple of stops to try and get some detail in the sky, which I can do. But as soon as I do that, what happens is I, I lose all the detail in the foreground. I need detail in the sky, detail in the, the shadows. How do you do that? Well, HDR, high dynamic range, exposure blending, call it whatever you like. I'm gonna to have to take a couple of exposures. So I'm gonna jump into my camera menu. I'm gonna find the AEB exposure bracketing and we'll dial it in. So I take three pictures, two stops apart. Here we go. And a quick review on the back of the camera. Yeah, I can see I've got a picture with detail in the sky. I've got a picture with detail in the, the steps and the grass. All I need to do is bring them together in Photoshop and uh, we've, we're good to go. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Okay, it's not really old. In fact, it's probably the most modern thing here on this location, but I just love the color. And let's get a picture of that as well, why not? So we've got the gates to the fort and these are probably the best bit I think for me because they've got lots of texture and interest and a bit of writing on there. So that all looks good. Let's get a picture of these. Now, whenever I come up to something interesting and I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do, my first thing is think about the wide shot and they don't get much wider than a panorama. Now, on the 15 minute photo challenge, I only allow myself to use one lens, the 24 to 105, but I can take a really wide shot by overlapping pictures to make a multi-image panorama. So all I need to do is put my camera in aperture priority mode, choose my aperture, f8, and take a meter reading. 
and my camera is telling me a, a shutter speed of four hundredth of a second. So let's go to manual, dial in four hundredth of a second, F8, ISO 400, and we'll take a series of overlapping shots. Now they all need to be taken in upright, portrait format, that's really important. Okay, around we go. So we'll start here. And all I'm doing is I'm looking at the left side of my viewfinder, and whatever appears in the left side of my viewfinder on one shot will appear on the right hand side of my viewfinder on the next shot. Okay, I've got another idea for a wide shot as well, so I'll switch back to aperture priority mode and we'll just come down here because I just want to get this sweep in. Now again, I need to get a nice low viewpoint, I think, for this. I'm thinking about foreground interest in my scene. I might need to stop my aperture down so I get a bigger depth of field. Remember, the, the bigger the aperture number you dial in, the, the bigger the depth of field. So F11, F16 should give me a nice big depth of field. The downside is the shutter speed will start to drop off really quickly. So you may have to bump up your ISO to compensate. It's getting a bit breezy, so uh, I think we've got time for one more shot. And I'm just going to do some of the close-up detail of the door. So let's come in really close. And we've got some beautiful texture in here, so let's grab some texture shots. I'm going to open the aperture up for a really shallow depth of field. And we'll take a couple of shots like that. Looks really good. And I think just for a record shot, I'm just going to take the back of the door with the writing on as well. So let's do that. So there you go, 15 minutes comes and goes really, really quickly. Now, if you need some inspiration on how to get more out of your photography, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where you can find out loads of great hints and tips. And if you wanna find out what I'm gonna do with my pictures, I'm gonna put them through Photoshop right now. Mmm, right? there really isn't anything like a nice warm cup of tea. It was freezing cold and blowing a gale filming that, but I got some great pictures. And I'm going to edit the HDR or the exposure blended image, and we're going to do that right now in Photoshop CC. So I've got the three images sorted out that I shot. These are my three simultaneous images, two stops apart. I've got the first one highlighted. I'm going to hold the Shift key, click on the last one, and I'm using Mini Bridge here, which means all I need to do is right click, choose Photoshop, and then merge to HDR Pro. Now, of course, you could use the file, automate, merge to HDR Pro, go in that way if you prefer, doesn't really matter. What we're trying to do is create something called a 32-bit image, and merge to HDR Pro is brilliant at doing just that. We need to set a couple of things up here. So first of all, I'm gonna turn on remove ghosts because there's moving clouds and that can cause problems. And then I'm gonna change the mode from 16-bit to 32-bit. Now I know the, the picture looks worse as a result, but stick with me, it'll get better. Now the reason I'm using Photoshop CC is because it has this brilliant little button at the bottom that says complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. And if I just move down a little bit, because this is too big to fit on the, uh, the video, there's a button at the bottom that says tone in ACR, which I'm gonna click. And what that'll do is it'll take my 32-bit HDR image and put it straight into Adobe Camera Raw. So where before in Photoshop CS6, you would need to save it as a 32-bit TIFF and bring it in, now it automatically comes in as a 32-bit straight into Raw, no more work to be done. But if you wanna find out how to do this in CS6, go back and watch episode 115, where I shoot an HDR image and process it in CS6. Okay, so in RAW, I've got everything here, and this is a huge amount of data to play with. So I can get the highlights and really come down low to recover that highlight detail. I can open up the shadows. I can put in some clarity, of course. I can warm up the temperature. So it all looks really good like that. I'm very pleased with that. But a few things we need to do, a bit of housekeeping, really. I'm gonna go to the Detail tab, and I'll put some noise reduction in because there isn't any by default. And then I'm gonna to go to the Lens Correction tab, and I'm gonna turn on Chromatic Aberration, because there's plenty of that in the picture. Okay, so that's all I need to do here in RAW. I'm just gonna click on the OK button, and we'll leave RAW behind and come back into Photoshop. Now I could stop here quite happily, but I think this picture just needs a little bit more. And sometimes when I'm stuck for ideas, I'll use plugins. And today I'm gonna to use the Perfect Photo Suite from on one. 
Now, to do that, I just need to tidy up my screen a little bit. So let's bring this on like so. And I also need to get rid of the, the fact it's a 32-bit file because if I try and use the ON1 or any other plugin for that matter, they're unavailable because of the huge amount of data. So to get rid of that 32-bit file and go to a 16-bit, first of all, I need to go to Layer, then go to Rasterize and Layer, and then I can choose Image, Mode, 16 bits per channel. Don't flatten it down, or don't merge it down. And then I can choose File, Automate, and there it is. And I'm going to choose Perfect Effects 8, which is just brilliant for giving you ideas and inspiration on things you could do with your pictures. So let's have a look at the, the presets here. And there are a bunch of presets. I'm going to go with the vintage ones, which has a, a great range of vintage style presets. And you can see straight away all these fantastic looks that you could give your picture. And they all just pop on the screen. It's, it's just fantastic. I'm going to go with this one here. Great name, great effect, Dirty Bird. Now, not only are there presets, but there are also individual filters you can apply. So I'll click on the filters. We need to make a new layer to put that on. So here in Perfect Effects, we'll make a new layer. And all I'm going to do is come down right down to the bottom. We'll go with Vignette. Click on the option to see some previews. And I'm going to choose this one, Big Softy. Like the name, like the effect. I'm not actually choosing effects by name. I should point that out. But once I'm done, I'll click on Apply. And that will take me out of Perfect Effects and back into Photoshop. And there you go. There is my image complete. Now, if you want to see more videos from me and the other great presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've, you've got to click on the subscribe button. However, if you just happen to be in New York City around about the 25th of February 2014, for one day only, I'm doing a live workshop at Adorama. So come down and see me and we're in for a great day. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick